I mean, assemblies and field trips were great because usually no one explained anything. When the fire truck growled past the window, Bobby and I stood up. Miss Sims said, sit down. Bobby and I sat down. Then everybody else stood up. Miss Sims said, everyone sit down. Everyone sat down. It was a pumper truck. And finally, Miss Sims said, all right, line up with your partner slowly, slowly, Linny. Straighten up, slowly. Now stay in line and no stampeding. Walking playground, out to the playground, we watched that pumper truck pull up over the curb and drive up in between the swing sets and the tetherball poles. And when it rumbled up close to us on the blacktop, I yelled, what are they going to tell us this year? And Miss Sims leaned down and said, the firemen will explain everything. The guy who was driving the truck turned the engine off, but he let the clutch out too soon. The truck jumped forward two feet, missed the principal this far. <laughs> I could have told him that was going to happen. You can't let the clutch out until the engine is completely stopped. Otherwise, the clutch plate will re-engage the flywheel. Miss Sims said, the second fire guy disappeared behind the truck, but he came right back with this galvanized tub dropped it on the blacktop, and began to dump rags in it. And the clutch guy said, we're really glad that you invited us here today, but how many of you can tell me what flammable means? Everybody raised their hands because that was easy. And Laura said, if something can catch fire, then it's flammable. I knew that. Very good. Now, how many of you can tell me names of flammable items around the house? And everybody jumped in with furniture and clothes and dolls and Stan. And everybody laughed and Stan punched me and Miss Sims said, calm down. Gasoline. Breathe, Bobby. Because the second fire guy was splashing gasoline on the rags in the tub. Now, if there are flammable items all around us, who can tell me why it's important that we not play with lighters or matches? We waited. Could be a trick question. <laughs> Finally, Stan said, because we might catch everything on fire, that's right. And there just aren't enough firemen to put out all those fires. <laughs> you know, we had always thought there would be enough firemen. <laughs> but right then, the second fire guy held a fire extinguisher over his head and said, What's this? A fire extinguisher, we yelled. And then he reached into the pocket of his big yellow coat and took out another rag. This rag is made of the same materials as your pajamas. And then he dumped it in the tub, reached into his other pocket, took out a box of matches, and did exactly what he told us not to do. He <laughs> threw it on the flammable materials. Boom! We cheered. <laughs> but he held up his hand. And he flipped the nozzle up the standard 45 degree angle that he'd showed us last year, said, Always point the nozzle at the base of your pajamas. Psh! This prevents oxygen from reaching the flammable items and puts out the fire. Psh! Fire needs oxygen to burn. I knew that, but I'd never thought just how much oxygen there might be around the house. When it was over, they dumped the pajama rags in the incinerator out by the swings, and they climbed up back on the truck, and the clutch guy turned around and said, thanks for inviting us. Now, has anybody got any last question? And Lenny said, what would happen if a fire truck ran over you? <laughs> and the principal looked at Lenny, 
And the fire guy looked at Lenny and said, don't you worry, son. We don't let accidents happen. And he slid into the seat, turned the engine on, and the principal came and stood with us. 